Okay, we are going to start in a moment. I hope everything is working. So, welcome to my studio again. Hi guys, we are going to start in a moment. This is going to be a short look at the new Art Alchemy metallic paints. Eight exciting colors. So I hope you will enjoy this little show. I have some ideas to show you how you can use them. So just in a moment we are going to start. So for those of you who don't know me yet, my name is Anna Domroska and I am the product designer for Prima Marketing. People usually call me Finavar and these are my paints. We are going to talk about them now and in a short moment we are going to start the presentation. We are in my studio in Ireland and if there is any problem with the internet connection I have to blame the poor network in our village. So this is all we can do but last time, last week it was really good so I don't expect any problems. So the last check. It's almost uh, seven o'clock here, so we should be on time. You can have a look at my table here. I have some uh, samples to show you. I've got two little collage projects with a lot of texture. This is one, and this is the twin project going with that. You can see them tomorrow on my blog because I'm going to post them to um, give you a closer look and then there's another one a little bit different style very colorful all both of them or all three of them I was using metallic paints okay so I think we are going to start now so I'm very very excited to show you eight new colors of art alchemy metallic paints those of you who uh, were using metallic paints before, you already know how rich and creamy they are. This is beautiful, um, very highly pigmented and um, in the same time very shiny metallic paint. So we have new release of new um, colors, eight colors that I was picking for you, trying to find the ni nice tones. So I'm going to show you uh, all of them now and I will also show you two interesting techniques, uh, very easy ones, how you can use them in your project. So uh, just first look at the colors. So we've got finally the color which is <laughs> very, very popular and very useful. So um, pearly white color, which we just called the uh, white pearl. So you can see it here. Then beautiful color of soft satin, which is something between beige, pink, a little bit of silver in it, a little bit of gold, something very hard to describe but amazing. Then we've got this color, this is called Coral Reef. So Coral, coral, reef, coral reef is something between pink and orange with a little bit of the golden shimmer in it. Then uh, being in underwater, so there is Mermaid Teal. Beautiful shade, something that all people like, like turquoise teal, there's, it's always popular color, so I'm, I'm very excited about this one. Then Crocus Fields, beautiful shade of purple, very different to the one we had before, so dark denim was deep, almost on the red edge. This is pure uh, purple color, very lovely, and um, I'm sure you will love it too. Then the next one, uh, Plum Preserves, <laughs> again, something between purple and red and beautiful color which I call midnight sky deep deep blue almost like cobalt blue and finally a dark green color called dark forest so if you will come closer here now I will show you how they work on the papers so you will see what is the coverage and how you can um, expect them to show on on your project. So I painted this my, uh, journal, of course, with some black gesso to show you just uh, what will be the effect 
on white and on black or almost black surface they are uh, shiny paints they are a little bit more like glazes so the coverage is going to be uh, depending on the uh, color so let's tie let's start with the white pearl this is great color for any projects when you just need this beautiful shiny white so you can just have a look amazing right you can see it has silver tones in it so on the white paper it has a little bit of the white warmer tone and then on black you probably will need more cover than one to have completely white color but it has really really cool shine and it's really rich so you don't really have to worry about um, the amount of the paint you're applying. Now we look at the soft satin. I told you this color is really beautiful. It's hard to describe though. Um, <laughs> it's something between silver, gold, beige and pink, as I said. So let's have a look at the color. So here we go. That's how it looks on black and white. Right. So let's go to coral. I'm opening coral for you. Coral reef. You can see the gold in it. It's just beautifully shiny. Okay. Oh, a little bit more, sorry. Yep. So you can see, as I said, it's like glaze. So on the darker um, surface, the metallic paints they give you nice coverage but you probably need a little bit more of a color to have the full covering look let's go to teal mermaid teal mm -hmm. really beautiful i'm trying to get another clean brush just look at amazing and you can see it has some blue tones also in it especially on the black you can see the beautiful blue shimmer finally we go to crocus fields i think this is super electric purple and you can see it is a little bit more solid than uh, for example, soft satin or the teal. Then dark forest. A beautiful tone, very deep and very, very dark. Another a little bit darker than and more covering. one midnight sky ah, exciting color you can see the darker colors they have more of the coverage and the very last one plum preserves Need to dry my brush a little bit. Just look at this. It's just yummy. It's the, the most beautiful color you can imagine. Something between pink and purple and red in the same time. So here we go. On your left side, there are colors which are lighter, a little bit less covering. So you can see the pearl. Then the soft satin, coral reef and teal are a little bit more translucent. And then the more solid color, so the crocus fields, the uh, for dark forest. Then you've got the midnight blue and finally the plum preserves. I will show you now um, how you can use them for some uh, nice techniques. I put it on the side. One of the simple ideas is just to layer one color on the top of another. This is beautiful frame, just resin frame from Frank's projects, uh, sorry, from uh, Frank's Garcia's uh, designs. There's another one which I painted already. And you can put 
one color of paint on the top of another once the bottom layer is dry. They are acrylic paints, which means they're permanent after drying. So if you want to dry brush the next color to highlight the details, you can do it. And here I was using, of course, the mermaid teal color as a base, right? And then I was rubbing some, uh, probably some waxes on the top. I, as far as I can see, it was the white gold wax. But you can take another color. For example, let's take this pearl color and try to dry brush on the top of the frame, which was painted with midnight blue and the dark forest color. I dried it already with the heat gun, so we don't have to wait. I will find a nice brush. <laughs> so I hope I have a clean one now. Okay, brush. And then I take a little bit of the paint, not too much, because dry brushing is mostly about a tiny bit. And then we can start highlighting and showing the details. If you feel more confident, for example, using uh, your fingers to do it, of course you can. So this way, I'm just adding a tiny bit of a color on the top. I try to do it this way so you can see it. And another layer is going to be working as highlight, or highlight while the bottom layer is still visible. You can play with your uh, fingers to rub it on. It's very, very nice. And the good news is once um, the painter, uh, while the painter is still wet, you can easily blend different colors. So if you want to introduce another one, there's no problem. You can blend the paint one inside of another. So I'm just adding another tone in the details. Once they are uh, dry, I told you they're permanent, so you can quite easily layer one on the top of another. So it's very simple technique. Of course, um, you need a little bit of patience, so you don't put too much paint in one time, but very easily you can highlight the details of the project especially using lighter colors of paints on the top of the darker colors. So um, any shades of silvers, golds, pearls are going to do the job just beautifully because you are going to have lovely contrast. So this kind of frame may be placed on any kind of project. Uh, it is just nicely painted and um, we just need to dry it with the heat gun or wait patiently. Next idea. Um, the next idea, you can see this uh, concept of using paints on these projects. I told you I made them as uh, two panels. You can see I was trying to use the acrylic paints, the, uh, the metallics, to create the look almost like watercolors. Especially here, here. I was dabbing a little bit of paint. It was mostly crocus fields and... Uh, plum preserves on this one and here a little bit of the um, coral reef color too and then I was using also some spraying water just to let them flow in between the textures here you can see a lot of art stones and some uh, metal embellishments so my lotus flowers and then my plan was just to make the paint flow in between so how you do it you need a sprayer of course you need paint that you would like to make uh, drip or flow. Where's my crocus fields? Ah, oh, found it. Okay, so if I would like to add a little bit more here to this collage, I take a brush, not too big, just something to basically dab the paint in the desired places. And then I add it in a few spots and right away I water it so it can go wherever it wants to go so you can make it flow easily it's um only works of course when the paint is wet you can't wait for too long because if you wait as you remember acrylic paints are getting permanent so you can play with this technique for a short while 
It works beautifully with any texture paste, for example, with sand paste or um, graphite paste. If you're having these textures, just look at that, how easy it is. And we make a drip. And also, this is a great way of, of course, making the color softer. If you have a little bit too much color, you think, oh, I did just too much. I was too generous. This is a way of making that soft and nice. Yeah, this is how I painted these two little collage projects, just dripping the paint, two colors on this one. And then, of course, some splatters to make it look even better. Let's give it a little bit more color here. Yeah, dripping this way. Just like that. Nothing complicated, nothing really <laughs> sophisticated when it comes to technique. Brush, sprayer and paint. So I have one more exciting news for you. If you like the new colors, if you think that's something that you need to have on your crafting table, if you really feel that you can't leave without eight new colors of uh, metallics, I have uh, good news. Prima is um, having a giveaway on the Facebook page now. So until Friday, you can join the giveaway on uh, Prima Facebook page and you can win the whole set of my new metallic paints. Just look at them now. They're so beautiful. So you have the time to go. Uh, you have to probably like and share. You have to um, comment in the right spot and these art babies can be yours. So that's what <laughs> I have to tell you. It's the only set I have so I'm very protective. I'm not giving them to anyone but you can have yours very very quickly. I hope you enjoyed it. It was lovely to see you again and um, if you didn't have a chance, of course, you can watch it a little bit later. It's going to be uploaded to YouTube. Thank you so much for visiting me here in my studio and check my blog tomorrow. I'm going to show you the projects I was showing today and you will have a closer look. I hope, I hope you like them and um, I hope you have a lovely creative week. Thank you so much.